You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Cricket Podcast for our Cricket World Cup reviews and predictions. We're about to move on to Pakistan. But whenever we move on to Pakistan, we first have to prelude that with a big plug for our sponsor, Manscaped. Pakistan and Manscaped, they go hand in hand. (laughs) And your hand should also go hand in hand with Manscaped. Nice. I think that kind of works. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was a little Um, worried where you were going with that for for a second. (laughs) Head over to manscaped.com and use the code CRICKETPOD for 20% off plus free shipping. We've had the product. We're big fans. You can get the beard hedger, the lawnmower, oils, balms, combs, all sorts of gear. Um, And we highly recommend it. Performance package. That's what I would suggest. Um, Once again, go to manscaped.com, use the code CRICKETPOD, and you get 20% off plus free shipping. Just like everyone in Pakistan is doing, we hear. Um, Max, mm. Pakistan, they're going to the World Cup, aren't they? What What are the, the facts that we need to know about? Well, I mean, like, you know, let's let's be honest here. The, the, the kind of counter-narrative champions. The yeah. main narrative of this World Cup is, you know, India at home. They're world number ones. We're going to win the World Cup. Pakistan, they've barely been invited, have they? Like it's, 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 it's they've only just it's, got their visas. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a disgrace. The, the lead up. It's not a little bit of a disgrace, is it? It's a, <laughs> it's a massive <laughs> disgrace. It's, just, it's, not, it's embarrassing. But the, yeah. But they, it has I'd be surprised decided. if they, I'd be surprised if their kit has been allowed through. They're just like, nope, that's not coming through here, lads. You, you're going to have to buy all new kit. All sort this out. Yeah. Yeah. You have to play in, um, the Australia kit. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the Australia kit, the Australia alternate strip. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it has been it's been a shambles from from not from Pakistan uncharacteristically, but from the Indian authorities letting Pakistan into the country it does make them the counter narrative champions, as I was saying. Mm. Like they are now kind of the bad boys of the tournament. Yeah, and we want them to win. Like they've, they've won the Moral World Cup already. And what more do you it need? It would be hilarious. Talk to me. How are they going to do this? How are they going to pull off this heist? Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that is that's the main thing they have on their side. Counter counter narrative. It's what got England to the world, the 2020 World Cup last time out. Of course, the uh, the story was about everyone wanted uh, an India Pakistan final, and England came in and ruined that for everyone and won the thing. So um, history suggests Pakistan are in with a shout. They are captained by Babarazm, of course, and coached by uh, Rant Bradan, the New Zealand cricketer, formerly coached Scotland. He's been in the job since uh, May, and he's still in the job. Yeah, I was going to is... say, lucky, lucky they haven't changed that last minute ahead yep. of the World Cup. That's normal. That's more on, call that like... stickability. Is what well, that. more on, more on that later. That's the time job. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> but um, Pakistan, so, I mean, they, they've obviously just come off the back of the Asia Cup, which didn't go that well. They um, got absolutely pummeled by India. Humbled, embarrassed, shocked. All the words you can think of would fit the description of what happened to them there. But they were still in with a shout of making it through to the final to play India, which would be the first time that would have happened at an Asia Cup. And they were beaten at the last by Sri Lanka in some quite, well, enjoyable comic circumstances as far as that game of cricket went. They won it, they lost it, they won it, and then they lost it again. And um, and it was Sri Lanka who made it through to the final to also get absolutely destroyed by by India. Bit of a bit of a theme there. But the um, the starting eleven that we could probably expect from Pakistan will likely be, I think, um, given obviously the uh, the big injury news of um, Nasim Shah, it'll be uh, Fakhrizaman and Imam Haq to open up, followed by Babarazm and Mohammed Rizwan to pretty solid men to have in your uh, um, upper middle order. Um, then some combination of um, Salman Aga, Iftikhar Ahmed, Shadab Khan, followed by Mohamed Nawaz, probably Mohamed Wasim, I think, will get the nod um, over Hassan Ali, but those two is probably, they're fighting it out for Nassim Shah's spot. And then it'll be Shaheen Afridi and Harris Ralph to finish off the bowling quintet um, I suppose. So, um, I mean, it's on paper, it's a decent set of players. I, I think like there's there's some proper star quality in there. Obviously, 
Babarazm is a phenomenal cricketer, and Hamid Rizwan is also excellent. And Shaheen Afridi is Shaheen Afridi. Like he's, you know, he's box office world class. So they've got a they've got a lot of talent in there. But how it all knits together will be the interesting question for me. Um, first thoughts on that as a lineup. I think it's a pretty good team. I think from an ODI perspective, they've got a lot of talent. They've got the, they've got decent players. I think they are going to miss um, Nassim Shah's bowling. I think he's a, a bit of a point of difference for them. Um, but from a um, an all-round perspective, I think they've got a decent ODI team that are going to be competitive and they can take down anybody on their day. Mm. Jack? Jack? <laughs> I, I I think it's sort of classic Pakistan or classic mm. recent Pakistan. Like you, if you if you squint a little bit, you can see a really really good team. Yeah, and you can see some things that are genuinely scary. But then if you stop squinting and you just sort of look at the packaging as as a whole, yeah, take a step back. It's kind of like uh, I mean, like how, how do you? It, it's very wonky. Like they mm. they have elite elite level players. And then sort of just guys like, <laughs> and, and those guys are going to have the ball or be batting at absolutely yeah. crucial moments in this world cup. And I just, you know, I, you know, this is, sometimes it happens in sport that one of those guys, Steve Kerr in that documentary, the last dance, he gets the ball, doesn't he? And then he throws it in the hoop and everyone goes, yeah, Steve. Um, and who's going to be like, Pakistan wins... Steve at that one, at this one? <laughs> who's going to be Pakistan question. Steve Kerr? But like, you know, a lot of the time, the Steve Kerr character misses. And like Hassan and Ali re- did before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the reason, the reason you have, the, the, you know, the, the reason that people don't celebrate Steve Kerr like Michael Jordan is because he wasn't as good. He, he did have that moment. I think what I'm saying here is that I think there's a You're a basketball expert, is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I'm saying here is there's a couple too many Steve Kerrs in this lineup. Yeah. To to properly support none, the Michael Jordans. None better epitomised than um, Iftikhar Ahmed in the uh, in the uh, well, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's a it's it's a nice it's quite a nice way of putting it. I think that's a a fair assessment. Nasib Shah, of course, uh, big blow. He and Shaheen Afridi um, as a, an opening pair with the ball, or and at the death as well. Actually, I think something that's probably overlooked a little bit is. How miserly Pakistan can be at the death with their where their their paces. That that's obviously going to be be a big miss. We all saw what what they've done in the well the T20 World Cup with um with those two taking wickets up front. They can be sort of one of the most dangerous partnerships um in world cricket. But being robbed of uh, one of those options is is a shame. His um, early foray into ODI cricket after 14 ODIs and Seam Shah is. Um, Averaging 17 at a strike rate of 21 with the ball, yeah, which is is, is pretty potent. But a, a word of optimism, perhaps, or just to, you know, temper the disappointment for Pakistan fans out there. Um, a third of those wickets in in those stats, well, 10 out of the 32, so basically a third, um, did come against the Netherlands. So that who does, are at the World know, Cup? That does, so, yeah. They are, but they are still the Netherlands. Um, so that does massage the uh, the statistics. Slightly, um, and Mohammed Rasim will probably come in. You know, a bit of a bit of youth. Um, he's allegedly an all-rounder, so I think that's kind of put sort of a some. I don't know what's the opposite of rose-tinted spectacles on our thoughts of him as a cricketer because he gets billed as an all-rounder, and everything we've seen of him so far suggests that he can't really bat. He's one of one of Ross's classic uh, guys who should be batting at number eleven rather than number <laughs> eight or nine. But you know, with the ball, he actually he averages twenty-six. Uh, a strike rate of 30 so far in his ODI career. So it's not the same Shah numbers, but it's it's still it's still good. There's something there's something to work with there. So maybe he could be a breakout star from at this World Cup and and fill the void that Nassim Shah's left behind. But um I think the star quality I suppose is, is where you'd pen their pen their strengths in this side. But I in the middle overs Babarazm and Mohamed Rizwan can keep things ticking really, really nicely. I mean, they score a, a reasonable enough um, run rate and they don't lose many wickets in the middle overs. They set a really good platform and keep things going, um, yeah, which is... Got a century you know, yesterday against New Zealand, didn't they, Mohamed Rizwan? 
Eight yeah. for Bama. Obviously, not quite enough in the end, but uh, they both they both did well. With, so those two, yeah, they're key. They're massive to the engine room, and and it's quite a good core to have of your uh, of your engine in your uh, your ODI side. And then you know, from the bowling point of view, I've, you know, I mentioned sort of some of the the death stuff, but they've got um, they've got Shahina Freedy. So they they've got every chance of blowing a side open just on the back of him. Uh, he's you know he was injured with a knee injury for ages um and you know he's been in and out a bit so whether he's fully firing we'll see but well, he's had he did a pretty bit, good for the little fire and that's and that's yeah. the that's the standard you need to hit so <laughs> <laughs> he had a, he's had a chance at the asia cup as well to get more more overs in his legs and play some you know odi format cricket so i, I think it should be coming at a nice time for him and um and hopefully we'll get to see a full tournament of shaheen um knocking knocking poles out the ground so there's there's reasons for optimism there but the flip side is basically everything jack said ross has got his hand up though so i will go to ross before moving on to the weaknesses well what we said before around australia and them mm. not having the depth in the yeah. spin department <clears throat> that's where i think one of pakistan's strengths is as well they've got people they can turn to who are kind of decent enough match-up bowlers and that's where i think we saw in the last world cup um, that India, uh, that Pakistan did really well, and I think that is a thing, that is a strength that they should play on. And I mm. think when Jack was talking around, well, actually, how do you cycle through and get through a lot of overs from some of your lesser bowlers in that Australian lineup? I actually think that Babar Azam has the opportunity to do something actually quite useful here, and actually has that flexibility, which I think is really mm. going to be absolutely essential in this World Cup and the conditions that they'll play. In. It's interesting, interesting that you'd point that out as a, as a strength. It's a fair point. The options are definitely there. You've got Shab Khan with the, the wrist spin, Nawaz left arm, finger spin, Iftikhar Ahmed, bowl off spin. So they've got, yeah, all basically all the bases covered. They don't have a left arm wrist spinner in there, but that's not a, that would that would just be um, you know, be, that'd be showing greedy, off, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? That'd be yeah, you know, can't, what you does Mohammed Rizwan bowl? You know. You can't all be India, can you? So um, there's uh, th- th- that's true. They have the options, but they also don't take any wickets with the ball in the middle overs. So yeah, they've got the options, and maybe they can tie things up a bit. But they are so impotent um, in in that middle stage. Like Shadab Khan's a, a quality cricketer, but I think he needs a bit of backup in the middle overs. And that you know it might be from the paces as, as well. They don't tend to bowl that much in the middle and it's just a, a procession really of, of Shalab Khan flanked by sort of better than part-time off I've got a theory on this. Yeah. They play on absolute roads typically. Pakistan, yeah. awful place to play cricket. Where they play mm-hmm. in UAE, awful place to bowl spin as well. I think in terms of those, they literally normally play on absolute highways in terms of that. So I'm going to stand up for the Pakistan spinners. Okay. Jack. I'm not. I, right, so <laughs> I, I don't think... <laughs> I don't think I that they. Bad. I don't think they play on roads in the sense that you can score loads of runs and it's actually really easy to bat. Like I, I think generally where Pakistan have been playing cricket, it's it's been on. Might not be that easy to. It might not be that hard to get out. It might be hard to take wickets, whatever. But it's not necessarily easy to score runs. I, I don't. I I think that's. I think the spin department is is. Poor. It's it's fine, yeah. But it's not better. I would, I would like five out I, of ten. I mean, like is that what you're giving it right. Yeah, I, maybe a six. I mean, I think if you want to have a look at the tournament as a whole, you know, we've got Afghanistan, pretty pretty tasty in the spin department. India, pretty tasty in the spin department. I would say they're probably the best. Maybe South mm-hmm. Africa. You you float around that that top three as well. I think Pakistan are somewhere in the middle pack with teams like England and, you know, they're probably a bit better than New Zealand, but yeah. that kind of, that kind of ballpark. And I think that's sort of all right. I mean, I actually think, I actually think Max, you, you've sort of talked, talked a lot about Shaheen, obviously, because he is the guy. And I think that that's sort of all right. If you have Shaheen bowling well and Harris yeah. Ralph gets fit, I think then it's okay to have a, some spinners that basically they're quite economical, but they're, sort of just there to make up the numbers as well like you have to bowl yeah. 50 overs so why don't we let that guy have a go if you can make sure um, the team don't get I, far away from you in the middle overs then you bring it back with yeah your, exactly your I, so I, I think I, I think it's fine there but I wouldn't I, I don't think I'm looking at Pakistan and saying that's 
wall to wall gun bowling. I think it's yeah. very good, and then it's sort of slightly average, mm. pretty average, and then I think it's quite good again. That's, that's yeah. my my take. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. that's not their main weakness. You know, it's it's a point mm-hmm. that it's it's. I, I was going to make the point. I think it was a you know, a, a, and also with what Ross was saying, it was a you know the right time to bring it up. But the real weakness for them is with the bat. And it's at the start of the innings and at the end of the innings. They are awful. Like, genuinely awful. With the, with the bat and the power play, they lose wickets and they don't score quickly. They, they do the exact opposite of what you want to do in a game of cricket. And at the end, they don't, they don't finish. Like, they, they've set this platform throughout the middle with Baba and Rizwan and they score a decent enough rate and they keep wickets in hand. And at the end, they do absolutely nothing with it. They've got Maybe with um, uh, I guess our man, they've got a little bit more now than in the last couple of years. I think he's come into the side and he's he's been he's been decent. He's sort of scored at more than a hundred and and actually put some sort of reasonably quick runs on the board. And Iftikhar actually strikes at over a hundred in his ODI career, which surprised me. Uh, but he has the he has the the skills, the qualities to do it just doesn't do it all that often so um it's <laughs> it might come into a call will come together for them in a game or two and it might be the games that matter and and it might work and pakistan might win those big games and go far but for the most part they're over reliant on baba and rizwan scoring some runs in the middle and they really disappoint and that, like you said earlier, Jack, that might be okay if you've got Shahina Freedy and he does all the all the hard yards for you with the ball. But without Nassim Shah to back him up, you know Harris Waralf, um with his um, with his injury as as well, it's going to be a bit of a battle for them unless they're they're fully firing with the ball. So and that I've got a very quick question. Greatly. Yes, a very quick question. Um, is there a place for Show Malik or Mohammed Hafiz in the? Uh, in the- <laughs> There's always a place for Mohammed Hafiz. <laughs> always. Uh, it's probably a place um, for West Africa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, uh, I was having a look at all the players in this tournament over the last two years, and mm-hmm. if you have a look at the top fifteen. There are four, more than any other team, four four Pakistan players in the highest batting average. So there's that's quite impressive. Yeah. Uh, if you look at where they rank for strike rate, three of the four are in the the bottom four of that fifteen. Yeah. Uh, I think there's Kane Williamson's propping up the strike rate table for guys who score <laughs> lot, score lots of runs. Yeah. Um, but then it then it's uh, Baba and Rizwan and Imam Imam Al Haq. Yeah. Uh, all, all score quite a lot. Don't get out very much, but they aren't aren't super quick now I, I i to go back to what i was saying earlier i think that might be partly because they play in places where you can't score that quickly but also these are guys with a little bit of a reputation for scoring mm. slowly like they're not they're not known for being bashers are they so yeah there you go yeah and uh, that could see them come unstuck against quite a few of the teams in this tournament and again it's you know it's dependent it is pitch dependent on some of the more turning tracks then maybe you know it balances out a bit but if they're playing somewhere where runs are easier to come by they will they will be out for and the firepower they don't have the firepower to keep up most of the time with um with teams like england australia even you know south africa and and uh and india so they um I think that's uh, that's an issue for them. So in terms of you know what where they might finish, what they might do, I think they're they're obviously still in the conversation for that. I mean, should we call it the fourth semi final spot? <laughs> because I think India, England, and Australia are all fairly. Um, well, I mean, they're they're the three favourites with the bookies, and and they're clearly on paper the the ob- obvious three strongest sides, and and then there's one other space. To join them in in that top four, if you're looking at it from purely from you know the the squads and the the sides and, and analysis, so that that final spot they could they could make it. They'll be they'll be in the conversation. Like none of the none of the teams are perfect, and there are ways that they can win games. We've already spoken about those, but I I'm a bit I'm a bit down on them. Um, there, there, there are teams. Winning. 
They're definitely a team who's got that uh, ability to slip up against the minnows, mm. right? And I think that's the that's, if they can if, if they can if they, if they if they can avoid that, they're in the conversation. But there's yeah. also a part where just like, oh yeah, Pakistan lost to the Netherlands. Not surprised. Like yeah. it's one of those yeah. things, like, one of those <laughs> things, like, just. Um, and I think if, if, yeah, if Pakistan I... Pakistan listeners are, are in here, fair fair point. England have lost to Netherlands before in a World Cup. Completely get you, but there is also that part. Not surprised. So um, yeah, that's just Pakistan. Mm. I'd I'd probably have them in that that mix as well. I think South Africa are better than them. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, and I think that could be the the team that make it. I mean, like, look, there's all there's the potential one of the other big three do fall out, and mm-hmm. that would benefit Pakistan massively as well. But if if the tournament goes to plan, they'll be looking to try and finish fourth or third. Yeah, South Africa are their main competition for that, and I mm-hmm. would rather be a South Africa fan at the moment, looking at the two teams on paper. Yeah, tell you what, I think that's fair. Fair. We know that narrative plays a big part. It had a big part. Dude, there's no narrative on South Africa's it, side. Huge narrative on the Pakistan side. Huge narrative. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, look, that is the thing. I mean, winning a World Cup in India would be mental for Pakistan. <laughs> I think, like, it would be <laughs> incredible. I think, that, I think that literally would be the end of the World Cup. I think we'd lose <laughs> half of our list. Yeah. <laughs> they, they Pakistan, would, Pakistan would be banished out of every other World Cup ever. Um, yeah. uh, Max, Spirit yes, Animal, let's wrap this spirit. up. Spirit animal. So uh, I don't think it's not this team specifically, not this Pakistan side itself. More about Pakistan cricket uh, as a whole. I've gone for the starfish as their spirit animal. Starfish are quite well known as animals who can regrow their limbs. And they'll do that whether they've been eaten by a predator or sometimes starfish will actually just jettison off their own limbs um, as a defence mechanism if they think they're under threat. And Pakistan are constantly jettisoning their own limbs in the forms of coaches, selectors, captains, heads of the board, you name it, they, they, they've they got them on the block. Rami's Raja came in, bulldozed around the place, Mizbal Hick Hack was out, then he was in, then he was out again, Shahid Afridi turned up for a bit, Mickey Arthur was a Zoom coach and then wasn't, and then they wanted him back and then he didn't want to come back. Um, and then just when he thought a semblance of normality had been restored and they'd brought in um, Brad, Bradburn um, just in May this year, a month ago they were talking about changing the coaching setup again. Just when you thought it all sorted itself out, they're back on the conversations about mixing things up. So they just they, they do it. They get rid of their they get rid of their legs, but they always grow back and they're always there. So that's why they are the starfish. Well, Imran Khan's looking for new employment, isn't he? So <laughs> um, maybe we'll see him come in half the time. He, he can be a Zoom coach from his jail cell. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're, we're going to take a um, quick break and then we're going to come back. It's India, Pakistan, India, and then finally England on our World Cup previews. You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. 